Welcome to Local SEO Tactics, where we bring you tips and tricks to get found online. I am producer Caleb Baumgartner, and in this episode, Jesse gives an extremely valuable SEO checklist for our listeners to create actionable goals to improve their SEO. Whether you're completely new to SEO or just looking for a refresher, this episode provides valuable insights in improving your search engine performance. Like our show? Don't forget to leave us a review on the platform of your choice. Thanks for listening, and enjoy the program. Welcome back to Local SEO Tactics, where we bring you tips and tricks to get found online. I'm your host, Jesse Dolan. I'm going to be talking in this episode here today about a local SEO checklist, right? Just kind of a, um, an overview of the major components that you need to be successful for uh, implementing and being effective with your local SEO for your website and for your brand. Before we dig deep into that here, I want to mention our free instant SEO audit tool. If you have not used it yet, and if you haven't, I'm surprised, you either must be in your first few episodes or been the world's greatest procrastinator because uh, we're over 100 episodes in and I think I've mentioned it on virtually, uh, well, almost every episode. So if you haven't heard about it by now, um, newsflash for you here, go out to localseotactics.com, go up to the top right, look for the yellow button for the instant SEO audit. It's completely free. Plug in your web page, plug in the keyword you want to optimize for, and it's going to give you a score. You get a PDF. It's got lots of graphics, punch list. I mean, it's a very shareable for your uh, your business partner, your marketing manager, right? Anybody else you want to share this with, um, you can take the initiative, go out to localseotactics.com, run the free audit. It's going to give you a great bullet point list of things that you should do for your page to better optimize for that keyword. Super slick. Um, no cost, totally free. Use it as many times as you want on as many pages on your website as you want. So uh, shameless plug. If you haven't checked that out by now, go ahead and check it out. And if it's been a while since you ran it, hey, time for a redo, right? Get out there and, and do it yourself too. LocalSEOTactics.com. Look up in the top right corner for the yellow button uh, for the uh, instant SEO audit and take advantage of that. So let's dive in here and let's talk about local SEO uh, for your website and a local SEO checklist. And I'm going to run through here just kind of the basic things you need to do. It's been a while since we kind of had a roundup um, of this. And I think it's time that we kind of refresh it, uh, include some things that uh, maybe a couple of years ago weren't part of kind of this basic uh, local SEO checklist here for your business. And in this example here, I'm going to just assume you have one location. If this is a multi-location business, there'll be some slight tweaks to it here, but uh, one location. And we're just going to start at the very beginning uh, with needing a website. Now, if you're in the fortunate position and lucky enough to be launching a business right now, there are definitely some things you want to be thinking about uh, for your domain. Um, I wouldn't recommend just kind of getting a new domain and, and running with this strategy if you already have an existing and an established brand um, that's ranking and you're getting some kind of traction. However, if you've got a brand that is just completely invisible online, and you're thinking about rebranding, you know, then you could do the same tactics here. Uh, but the, the thing you really want to take advantage of is when you're buying your new .com or .biz or whatever it's going to be, your new domain name for your company, uh, trying to incorporate a few things where possible. And um, sometimes this won't work. Maybe maybe the domain name's already taken, right? Or you can't do all of this. But working in uh, what I'm going to say here, any combination of it is uh, really going to set the stage for better results for you. So your brand, right? Uh, Intrix is the name of our um, digital marketing firm here. So having Intrix in our domain, right? It's just Intrix.com is natural. Um, now that it's a pretty unique word, right? It's not a lot of competition. And um, it was it was fairly easy compared to let's say Joe's plumbing.com, right? Or something like that. But where possible, you want to get the brand um, in your .com. And then also uh, two other things. One, what's your primary service, right? If you're in a niche, let's say if you are a plumber, right? Having plumber or plumbing, um, in your .com is great because now you have a keyword right in your root domain. And that's extremely powerful. And last but not least is if you are married to a geographic area, right? The city that you uh, work in and that you serve, trying to get that in there, right? So if it's Jesse's plumbing, Minneapolis.com or Jesse's Minneapolis plumbing.com, that would be great. You know, if I was in Minneapolis and a plumber, for example, right now that can be limiting, you know, so kind of take that with a grain of salt towards whatever your business plan is. Um, so maybe it's just jessiesplumbing.com if you don't want to be tied to that geographic area. Um, but if that makes sense to you, having those three elements in your .com is very, very powerful. At the very least, if you can get your keyword in there, you know, and your, and your brand in there, things like that, you're going to be in really good shape. Uh, so that's something you always want to be able to take advantage of on the front side. 
Now, second tier. Uh, so now you got your you got your, you got your dot com right. Um, you can mix the order of the stuff up a little bit, you know. But these are kind of the important things here that we're going to walk through. Um, so I'd say next, quote unquote, uh, in your quotes here for people watching, is uh, your homepage. Your homepage is the entrance to your store, right? It's the first thing people walk through. It's the first impression they have. Um, not necessarily if they did a Google search and, and it ranked, right? Maybe one of your primary landing pages is going to be what they find here. But for sure, anybody that you're sending there through these, these other ways, they're going to hit your homepage. So on your homepage, you know, we definitely want to present a, a kind of a good navigational structure, right? There should be some kind of strong CTA, some strong branding. They really need to know that they're in the right place uh, for your brand and for your service. Um, but it doesn't have to be like super optimized for all your products and services and all your geographic areas, right? Don't do that. We're going to take care of that through some other subsequent pages here. Your homepage should really be focused around making sure your, your primary call to action is there, right? Like, so when somebody walks in your store, what's the number one sale you want them to be aware of, right? Or in that same analogy, you know, can they clearly see the aisles and where they need to go within the store? Uh, you want to clearly lay out to them the path uh, that they should be taking, right? milk's way in the back, bread's over here, produce is over there, right? They should be kind of visible. Um, so on your homepage, what are the primary products and services you're trying to sell? You know, mentioning those or having jump off points, right? Buttons, you know, paragraphs, pictures, click here for more information, blah, 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 things like that. Kind of a, a general welcoming uh, to the homepage. Here's all the products and services that we do. Click here and then they'll get a detailed um, version on that page. So for example, here, if you had like five um, primary services that you offer, right? You're going to have a page about each one of those. We're going to talk about that in a second, but you're going to want a little snippet of each of those five services on your homepage, right? So kind of like, are you looking for this here? Go, go get it on the next page, right? Um, so nice visual, very welcoming, representing your brand, who you are, what you do, strong call to action, and some kind of brief mention <clears throat> about the primary services and products that you have to offer on your homepage. Now you still want to do this with SEO in mind, even though we don't want the homepage to be the thing that ranks for everything. Um, you still want to put SEO into it, right? Do your H1s, your paragraphs, all your conventions, images, alt tags, optimize it for speed, all that, right? Uh, but take care of your homepage first. And it usually sets the stage for um, your style, right? And the, the nature of how you're going to lay things out. So it's always an easy, easy jump off point is to focus on the homepage. After that, you're going to want to go to those specific service pages that we talked about. Um, for every product or service that you offer, and I'm talking like the primary ones, right? Not every variation on color or slight, you know, model of a certain device or whatever. For now, we're talking about the primary products and services, right? Do you sell red balloons? Do you fix cars? Do you fix leaky pipes? Like whatever it is, have a page uh, for each of those. Now, those you're really going to want to optimize uh, for those keywords. You're going to want to make sure your headlines, you know, all, all the standard kind of font um, and character manipulations, you know, bold, italic, bullet points, H1s, H2s, you know, various things like that. Leveraging your keywords in all the right places, letting Google know this page, page is really all about this one specific product or service, uh, photos, alt tags, all that stuff, your meta, your title should all be highly focused around a particular product or service. And what you're also going to want to do, depending on how wide your service area is, um, if, you're, if you're operating in more of a small local area, those pages should also talk about where it is, right? Best auto repair in Minneapolis, you know, reddest balloons in Minnesota, you know, things like that. So you're going to work your geographic references into those primary product and service pages as well. Next thing here that we're going to do is we're going to go after the, the specific locations. We're going to create location pages or city pages. You might hear them uh, referred to as as well. And if you can envision kind of making your product or service page about those red balloons or about auto repair or about leaky pipes, likewise, you're going to develop a, a page that is more heavily focused on the geographic area. Now, these location pages are not going to be part of your navigational structure on your website. Those service pages, those product pages probably are. They're probably up in your main menu uh, or at least linked down on the footer, uh, things like that. Those are accessible from the homepage. You're pushing people to those pages in the navigation or off the homepage, call to actions, things like that. These location pages are probably the first pages now on your website uh, if you're going through this journey kind of linear along this checklist here. 
Um, these are the first pages that are truly created to be more landing pages, to be found in Google. You're not creating these uh, to push users to them for navigational purposes. These are the first lures you're throwing in the water, trying to catch some fish. You're gonna want a page for each of the main uh, geographic areas you're trying to service, you know, whether that's suburbs, major metropolitan areas, cities surrounding your area, uh, or whatever it is. You can have multiple pages and they can be very similar. They're going to be unique because you're gonna be talking about those cities as well, right? So if we talk about your homepage, wanting to kind of list generally all the things that you're, that you're doing, um, you wanna apply that same logic here to your location pages, but give the most weight to the primary product or service that you represent. If you could think about it, like in this city, what's the one type of lead I want, right? What's the A1 lead? What's the A1 topic here that I wanna be known for? Make your city page, let's say my, Minneapolis, and again, if it's auto repair, you know, make sure that page is all about Minneapolis auto repair. Like your homepage, still mention some of the other things, right? Go ahead and do that. Um, but definitely make sure you're focusing on it as one geographic area for the primary focus and one product or service for the primary focus. Further down the page, you can list kind of the surrounding cities, unincorporated areas, um, landmarks, references, right? Kind of talk about the geographic area a little bit more and talk about some of the supplementary services or products that you have to offer as well. Uh, but make those landing pages. And I should back up too on both of these. For the landing pages, the city pages, location pages, whatever you want to call them, and your service and product pages. You want to also make sure that those keywords those specific references and phrases for that service of the product and for the location are part of the URL structure, right? So if it's intrix.com slash Minneapolis-MN for a Minneapolis location page, if we're uh, doing auto repair, you know, uh, intrix.com slash auto-repair, right? Things like that. Uh, also incorporate those in, into your URLs, not just on the page in the coding and uh, the file names of the photos, things like that. So now we've got our .com, we've got our homepage, we've got our primary service pages, primary product pages, location pages. Um, that's a lot of good guts to really launch your website. You should be having a dozen or multiple dozen pages, you know, if you're going through this process here. And as, as we get into ongoing SEO a little bit later in the episode, we're going to keep building on that, right? You, you may have hundreds of pages, if not dozens of pages. Uh, but for now, you want to kind of approach it in that regard, making sure your, your homepage, primary service product pages and location pages are all built out, being specific, targeting uh, particular keywords and areas, and uh, optimized against those for each one of those. Now you're going to want to add a blog, right? Blogs have kind of come in and out of favor. Uh, what's old is new again in this respect. Uh, blogs are a great way to put out new content on your website. We've got an episode, let's see here, number 122, that talks about specifically leveraging a blog uh, for SEO on your website. So I'm not going to kind of revisit that entire episode. But a blog can help you in many ways. You can create content. Uh, you can test content. You can... Um, create long form content that you can then cut up and maybe repurpose some of the paragraphs or snippets onto different pages. Uh, blog posting is a great way uh, to leverage SEO on your website. So you're going to want to add a blog to your site as well. Now, at this point, you've kind of got the basic foundation of a great website. And what you're going to want to do here, if you did not already do it before, or maybe you do it again even, is take a little break and you're going to do some keyword research. Because what you're going to want to do, you should be able to kind of do a lot of that stuff right there that we talked about just off of your own knowledge base. But now you want to make sure at this point going forward, you've really tapped into um, some research to find out what people are actually searching for, right? Uh, on this show, I've used the example many times about well, what is a multifunction printer versus what is a copier, right? Uh, if you're in the industry, a multifunction printer is a laser printer that essentially has a copier built onto it and can provide the same functions we're used to when we say the word copier. But at its core, it's a printer. So it's a multi-function printer, right? Well, people out there in the real world, they don't care. You want a copier, right? So if you didn't do keyword research and if you're selling multi-function printers as your business, uh, guess what? People are searching for copiers. People are not searching for multifunction printers. So you want to do keyword research to be able to align your products and services with what people are actually searching for. And now what you're going to do is uh, you have some existing content you've already created on your service and product pages. You may create new pages. Let's say you duplicate that page about auto repair. 
and you use that as a template. And now you kind of recraft that page to be about transmission repair or radiator repair or whatever that particular niche is, whatever people are searching for, you know, minivan repair, right? SUV repair. Based off the keyword research, what are people searching for? Um, either it's something that's very popular in your area, or if it's not that popular, but you're a very specialized expert in that, you know, you want to leverage that as well. Um, so do the keyword research, find out what people are actually saying. Now you can go back at this point, maybe re-optimize, you know, reconnoiter some of your existing pages, or you're going to create a list. Well, ultimately you will do this too. Even if you do reconnoiter some of your pages and re-optimize them, um, you're going to want to create a list of additional pages now that you need to create. All these additional pages, um, can be utilized through your navigation structure, right? If we go back, if you had a page that was for auto repair on your website as one of your main service pages, maybe on that auto repair page, now you want to have more links jumping off to radiator, transmission, you know, brake jobs, oil changes, all that kind of stuff. You don't necessarily have to. These pages can be created just like your location pages to be found and ranked. They don't have to become part of your navigation structure for, for pushing users through. Depending on your niche and your industry and, and everything else, that's going to be your decision. Uh, which of these pages are you going to put in through your navigation? Which ones are you just going to leave out there to be found by Google and act as uh, pure landing pages within Google search? Um, however you'd slice that up, um, you should have an extensive list of pages that you're going to want to create. Um, save that list, start creating them. That kind of is no right or wrong timing to do that. Ultimately, we're going to want to create all those. And we're going to circle back to this here in a second on... Um, assuming you haven't built out that entire list of pages, um, a, a strategy to, uh, to leverage that. So now at this point, again, you've launched your full website, you've done some keyword research. Now you have an idea of what pages you're gonna build, right? To go even further with, with this thing, you're gonna wanna now start working on things off of your website as well. We've talked extensively on the show about setting up a Google My Business location. This is definitely something you're gonna wanna take advantage with, of, I'm sorry. Whether you are a service area business, meaning that you go to a client's location to perform the service or to deliver the goods, or if you're a storefront, meaning they come to you or a hybrid, which is both, doesn't matter. Either way, you want to get in Google My Business. Check out some of our first early episodes. We've probably got about a dozen episodes that touch on the various aspects of Google My Business from setting it up to optimizing it to using some of the functions like posts and photos and getting reviews. That's a whole nother topic in itself that we really don't have time for on this episode, but for your local SEO checklist, build your website, get the navigation structure, get your primary content, get a blog, get keywords in mind, launch your GMB. Okay. Now you're going to optimize that GMB and you're going to leverage that GMB uh, for SEO in its own ways, which again, we talk about in other episodes and maybe we'll revisit it again here uh, in a future episode. Um, but get that up and running and get that rolling. It's completely free. You just have to verify that you're a legitimate business uh, through their process and uh, you're up and running. Now your Google My Business listing does have a spot to link back to your website. You're not going to want to list your homepage as the link for your GMB. You're going to want to list one of those location pages, whatever your primary location is, wherever you really want to be found. Uh, use one of those location pages. Now you can use your homepage. Don't get me wrong. We've had better luck leveraging a location page linked to the GMB than the homepage, uh, just because we're trying to draw some specific relevancy for that GMB, right? Uh, we don't want to be a generally good at everything, but a master at nothing. We want to be the master. We want to be dominant in a certain niche. Uh, so by linking your GMB to one of your location pages, you're starting to kind of connect those dots. You're telling Google that this GMB is about, you know, this page, right? Effectively, instead of your homepage, which is very general and a jump off point, your location pages are specific to that geographic area and should be highlighting some primary service or product. And uh, you're just going to communicate that a little bit more strategically uh, to Google in that regard, right? So you're going to want to set up your GMB, tie it to your website. Then you're going to want to start getting backlinks. And I don't mean buying backlinks. Don't go on Fiverr, right? Or, or anything like this and just buy 100 backlinks. What we mean is strategic backlinks that have to be locally relevant to you. Um, so supporting things in your community, right? I always use the example of a, the local t-ball team, right? If you're going to sponsor them and put your name on the back of their t-shirts, also, is there a, a website for the organization that can link back to you just to show that you're active in that geographic area? So you want those local backlinks, and then you also want industry-specific backlinks, right? 
whether it be a member of the Chamber of Commerce or the local plumbers union, things like that. You know, what's something that's related to whatever your industry is? Uh, can you get links from those? Can you get listed on those websites? And can those websites link back to your website, right? For people to click on. Build that out. Uh, that's a very manual process, very organic process, right? Where it's kind of a one-to-one -one relationship. You're gonna have to call somebody or email somebody, uh, but definitely worth the effort. Right here, you're gonna wanna take a pause as well. Don't just rack your own brain for what that you, what backlinks you need to go after or what things you're aware of, right? Do some competitor research. When you're doing your keyword research previously, you're probably bumping into a lot of competitors, you know, uh, who's dominant in your area, who's showing up a lot. There's tools you can use where I'm not going to dive super deep into it on this episode, um, but you can find a lot of tools online where you can plug in a website and see where they're getting backlinks from. You want to do that. If you have competitors that are ranking highly and that are in your area, find out where they're getting backlinks from. You want to get backlinks from those same places. You want to create your new ones as well and always try to do more than what they are, right? So be where they're at and then also be where they're not and show Google that you do have more uh, cool factor, right? You have more people that are linking back to you. You're more popular than your competitors. You're also going to want to get launched um, as many citations as you can for your business. Uh, in our recipe, citations and backlinks can kind of really overlap a lot, uh, but I want to call them out specifically on this local SEO checklist here for you because a citation usually means something that's more of a third-party website like Yelp, right? Or the BBB where you can not just get a link back to your website, but like a full business profile, name, address, phone number, description, maybe even photos, maybe even get reviews. Uh, Facebook to an extent could be considered a citation as well, right? Uh, although it's really more of a social media, you know, thing for the category, we're gonna put it in here today. Um, but just go out there, find all the places that you can get those citations. Again, Yelp, things like that. Get your business listed, get your business set up, maintain continuity across all platforms. Just like your GMB, what was your name for your Google My Business listing? What, what did you set it up as? Use that name across all these different citations. Link to the same page. Use the same phone number. Similar business descriptions, right? Logos, things like that. Make sure you get yourself listed in anything that you can online that's, again, relevant to your area, relevant to your business, your niche, your industry, things like that. And I have that continuity, your name, address, phone number, website linking, things like that. So Google... Uh, which can see all these things. If it's online, Google's going to find it, right? What you want is Google to be able to find all of these things and um, tie them all back to you. Let, uh, let them figure out that this listing on BBB, on Yelp, and everything else is Jesse's Plumbing. The more of those things they kind of put together, again, just like if you have more backlinks than your competitors, if you have more citations and listing than your competitors, Google should be looking at you with a little more prominence, a little more trust, a little more authority uh, than your competitors. Now, at this point, uh, you want to start kind of leveraging all of this together to some kind of a content strategy. Um, you're going to want to start posting on your blog about particular topics that are related to keywords, geographic areas, right? Like, what do you want to be found for? That's what you want to be blogging about. And if you're doing it the right way, you can create that blog post and then also repurpose it for social media. You know, again, not only are we going to be establishing ourselves on social media for the purpose of getting that quote, that citation listing, right? You also want to be showing Google that you as a legitimate real business are active in social media because, hey, most businesses today that are thriving and are good and are trusted and are the experts in their industry are on some kind of social media. Google's going to be looking for that as well. So take your blog post, push out some kind of content even once a month. Uh, weekly is better. Even multiple times per week is fine. But what you're going to want to do is leverage the content to be efficient. So you put out a blog post, maybe it's a thousand, two thousand words with some images. You should be able to take some snippets from that and use that on social media to automatically post on Facebook with that same content. Maybe you actually want to promote the blog itself, right? With a, with a Facebook post. Um, also repurpose that content to be used for Google My Business. And what we're trying to do here is just be efficient. Again, we're not creating brand new content for social, brand new content for GMB, brand new content for your blog. The blog should be the most extensive version of all that content. It's got kind of the most words, the most pictures, things like that. Start with that blog post, cut out little bits, repurpose it through these social channels in your GMB and uh, show regular activity, not only for Google, but people will start to engage with your brand and look to you in these portals, right? In these places or find you through them too. And this just gets you out there with a, a brand, with an image and uh, start to get some presence uh, established. 
helps for the users, helps for Google, and it uh, works good for everybody. Now, at this point, you again, you've got your website, you got a lot of content. Now you're producing um, kind of new contents on some kind of weekly, monthly basis. You want to make sure all of your analytics are in place. You should have Google Analytics installed on your website, the tracking code, so you can understand what's happening on your website. You want to be set up in Google Search Console so you can understand what's happening before people click on your website. What's your exposure and your ranking and your impressions and your clicks in Google, right? Uh, all very important uh, for, for SEO. And then likewise with your Google My Business, you're going to have some insights on the same thing for your exposure, your visibility, and uh, your traction within Google My Business. A lot of people will also do some kind of tool for keyword ranking. Um, earlier, you did some keyword research in our SEO checklist process here, and um, you should have your primary keywords highlighted. Uh, you don't, if you have a thousand keywords, you don't have to track all of them. Sometimes that can be cost prohibitive, uh, but if there's a top 10 or a top 20, um, you wanna be tracking those to see uh, where you are for the ranking. Now for all this analytics, no single one spot or one stat is gonna give you a true picture. Kind of like the dashboard on your car, you need multiple gauges to really understand um, if you're heading in the right direction, if things are working, right? Um, so just looking at your keyword ranking isn't gonna tell you anything because if you're ranking high, uh, but if you're not getting any clicks and any conversions, I mean, something's wrong there, right? With your meta titles, I'm sorry, with your meta description, your your, your titles and things like that. Um, so you wanna look at all of these things. Um, don't just look at your keyword ranking. Don't just look at their organic traffic, you know, because you may lose, you know, some uh, low performing keywords that if you boosted up your ranking, you can get more traffic, you know, things like that. Continue to look at your analytics and really get into the cycle of what do I wanna rank for? Am I ranking for it or not? If you are ranking for it, definitely always, a lot of people will just sit back and say, awesome, we're ranking for it. Uh, but I would challenge you to say, how can you leverage that further? Can you increase the conversions on that page, right? If you're ranking for it, can you get more opt-ins, more phone calls, more emails, more walk-in business, whatever it is, can you leverage your higher ranking to get even more conversions out of that, to give a better message, to provide a clearer conduit to your clients, whatever it is. Or another version too, I should say, is if you have a high ranking page, um, is there something else you can cross promote on it, right? Is there another way to leverage it? Not just by getting more, more conversions, but some kind of repurposing or some secondary message you can put up on that page. Now, if you're not ranking, then there's kind of a fork in the road. You have to make a decision. If you're not ranking for a particular keyword you wanna be found for, do you have an existing piece of content for that keyword? If you do, you may need to re-optimize for it. Uh, again, every market is going to be a little different. What might work good for red balloons in Minneapolis may not work good for red balloons in St. Paul, which is a nearby city. You may have to add more content on that St. Paul page. You might have to add more photos on that St. Paul page. You're going to have to do some research to what's currently ranking for competitors and how does their page differ from yours in those markets. So if you have content that's not ranking for a keyword, but the content exi exists, you're going to have to re-optimize that content or create new content. Sometimes you, maybe you need multiple pages centered around a certain topic, kind of leveraging a content silo uh, structure. We have some episodes on that. Go out to localseotactics.com, just search for uh, content silo or silo, and you should find the episodes about that. So you either have to re-optimize existing content or create new content if you're not ranking uh, for one of your targeted keywords. And not to simplify it too much, but that is then the ongoing process uh, for SEO. What do I want to rank for? Am I ranking for it? If yes, you know, leverage it. If not, re-optimize or create new content. Um, and there's some other, other little things that I'm kind of skipping over. But really, if you get into that kind of a process, um, you're well on your way to uh, being aware of what you want to rank for and uh, ranking for it. And that's going to transform your business. I think that's, that's a quick roadmap. Again, kind of a basic local SEO checklist from uh, your website to your GMB, social media, backlinks, on uh, how to make sure all your bases are covered. Um, this might take you a month or multiple months uh, to get all this rolled out. Um, but I think the, the, the big lesson here to underscore is that to really be successful for local SEO, you're gonna have to do all of those things. Um, if you're working yourself to do them all, you know, make sure you kind of get an understanding how much time that's gonna take. Uh, if you have somebody else on your team you're delegating this to, make sure you're listing all this out and you have a clear way to follow up with them to make sure they are executing it. And if you're working like a, uh, with a firm like us, um, ask questions, you know, see what the processes are. Are they doing all of these things? 
Um, because you can be effective in SEO without doing all of these things. Uh, the point here is that if you are doing all of them, uh, you should be able to be competing with even your highest, um, uh, how should I say, uh, most competitive competitors uh, in your industry. It's going to take all of these tools most likely uh, to dominate and uh, stay on top. So hopefully that helps you all out. Kind of a general roundup there of uh, best practices for, for local SEO. And uh, like I said on the front side, if you're running a multi-location business, the real only big difference here is that you're going to have multiple GMVs. And then you're going to have multiple citations, kind of focusing on those markets. You're going to build out those location pages, your citation, your GMB is a little bit more in depth for each physical location that you have. Otherwise, a lot of the processes uh, mimic there as well. Let's get into here our review for this episode. Hopefully, this episode brought you some value. Hopefully, previous episodes have brought you some value. Uh, we do a lot of shows with uh, Sue Ginsberg comes on. We talk about questions. Uh, that our clients and you listeners submit to us. Um, and then we also do episodes like this here where I'm going off a list of topics that we've curated over time, things that are popular, again, kind of questions we get asked, topics we get asked about, and um, try to just teach everybody, again, the tips and tricks to get found online. If you're liking this, we'd love to hear that you are by way of a review. Uh, that's a conduit for you to communicate with us, to tell us what you like about the show, if it's providing you some value. Um, and then also it does help us out, right? Just like getting reviews on your GMB is a good thing for local SEO. Uh, it is great for the show to get more exposure as well and uh, help out more people. This episode here, I wanna read a review that we got from Lizzie Brock. Uh, Lizzie, you're awesome. Uh, thanks for this great review. She says, these guys are the real deal. Jesse and Sue are the real deal. They have helped me gain my results from not ranking at all to beating people who have been in the industry for 10 years. And we are going strong. I listen to these episodes when walking my dog or in the shower and from there end up hiring them. That's uh, just pause right there. Lizzie was a, uh, a listener to the show and for quite some time now we've been helping her with her business and um, she was no stranger to SEO. So it was, uh, it was pretty fun to get started and uh, glad to hear her, her leaving this review and that we are helping her, right? Because she definitely knew a thing or two about a thing or two. Uh, getting back to the review, she says, I was in the SEO field and for the price, they are really worth every single penny. I've made my money back thanks to their help. This is the only marketing I do. Thank you guys, your team rocks. Thanks, Lizzie. Uh, glad to hear you with the review. Obviously, I know the results we're giving you because we talk all the time on a regular basis. I should say not like, like weekly here, right? We're not BFFs or anything, um, but we're intimate with you, with your success and where you were at in your SEO knowledge. And the fact that you were listening to our show, right? And gaining some things, uh, I think really uh, makes us feel good and lets us know that we are uh, doing good work and giving good value out here for everybody else. So. If you're feeling like Liz, where you think that we're doing a good job, again, we'd love to hear from you. Go to localseotactics.com, go down to the bottom, click on the button for a review, whether you want to leave it on Google My Business, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, whatever your platform of choice, we've got buttons there. Just click on them, you go to your appropriate platform, and uh, we'd love to hear a review from you. If you leave us one, we'll read it on the show, and I'll give you a quick shout out to just like Liz. And of course, I would be remiss if I didn't say if you need help like Liz and you like what we're saying here, we are always for hire to help you with your SEO. You can reach out to us there as well. I think that does it for this episode, everybody. I hope that helps you out. Love to get a review from you. And uh, until then, we'll catch you on the next episode. Take care.